This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Hey, Chris. Hey, everyone. How you going? All righty. So, another fortnight, I guess that's what you call them, two weeks? I don't know. We don't use that term here. Is that what a fortnight oh, really? is? Two weeks? Yeah, you, you guys don't use Fortnite. No, we don't use Fortnite at all. Oh, <laughs> and what do you call what do you call Fortnite over in the US? Two, two weeks. weeks from now? <laughs> <laughs> no, the game Fortnite. Oh, we call, call it Fortnite, it, but I don't think anybody understands what it actually is referencing. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're thinking uh, it's a fort that, at night. I don't know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a night fort. It's a night fort yeah. spelled differently, just to, for the sake of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What I mean to yeah. say is, though, hey, it's been two weeks and we're back. Yay! Hooray! Because there's things to talk about. Yeah, a few things to talk about. Um, I, I, I want to give a, a, just a little shout-outs here. Uh, our live broadcast uh, last time, which was our uh, gut reaction video to Pinball Effects, playing it, actually having hands-on with it. Um, we had a lot... Our largest viewership number for people live when I premiere these things... Um, and that was a lot of fun. So mm. I encourage everybody, when we do live premieres, funnily enough, I'm not going to be doing that with this episode because it would premiere on Easter, and yeah, nobody's going to watch. Um, <laughs> so That's right. Excluding this particular episode, um, usually uh, we wind up premiering these things on a Sunday morning, and I hop into the chat, and we do a live chat along with uh, the, the, the video. And when you're watching these things on YouTube, you can actually turn on the live chat and see what the conversation was going on in real time. But we had a lot of good interaction. It was a lot of fun. So I definitely mm. encourage you, if you happen to be available on one of those Sundays that we do these premieres, to uh, hop in, join in, because sometimes I'll have additional things to comment on uh, that weren't actually said in the podcast. Um, other times there's just some silliness that's going on and uh, just random general questions being asked that have nothing to do with what the podcast is uh, talking about. So... Anyway, it's, it's a good time. Yes, and I encourage everybody to uh, to hop in for that. Uh, another thing, and <laughs> this was kind of fun, Jared. So remember how, I don't know, episode or two back, I'd mentioned that, hey, if you happen to be in the old Disneyland parks, try and find me and then, oh, uh, yeah. then yeah. Say, say hello. Guess what happened to me the other day? <laughs> Did someone find you from the show? <laughs> Dude, so I'm... I uh, had my first week actually working Galaxy's Edge, and I'm there taking oh, photos. Yeah. And this fun. Um, you have to tell us oh, about that. No, having it was, it's a blast. Um, yeah. Just I don't even. It's weird because I don't even feel like I'm in Disneyland. Um, that's right, how that separated. Different. Well, because we come in by a different entrance and park in a different place. And it's just like, yeah, totally different vibe. Um, wow, that's cool. Yeah, and uh, but so I'm I'm sitting there taking pictures and. Uh, this family of four comes up, two little girls and a uh, mom and dad, and the dad looks at me, and then he comes really close and he goes, I know your secret identity. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing that <laughs> and the first thing that pops into my head is, okay, maybe he saw me the other day uh, when I was in Cars Land I've and I'd the other... taken their pictures, because that happens a lot where families are there multiple days and then I see them on a different yeah, day yeah. and you know, they'll say hello or whatever. And so yeah. I was thinking he was indicating that, but clearly, you know, we're supposed to be in character and we've never been off this planet, you know, kind of thing. So I was like, yeah, yeah oh, yeah. okay. And then he just kind of grins and he goes, no, I, I listened to the show. I'm, I'm narcolepsy from the uh, forums. <laughs> I was like, holy <laughs> crap. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it worked. Secret identity revealed and everything. So that was, it was kind of cool to have somebody, uh, well, and, and, and what he said was he wasn't quite sure and then he heard me talking to the guest in front of him. Oh. And it was just like, oh, yeah, that's that's him. That's that's Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. No, so did was... you give him did you give him the best photos? I, I certainly did my best with the uh, photos that I could do in that area. Um, I'm still mm. learning the, the photos of what to do there. Um, oh, yeah. It's like a whole different uh, it's a whole different vibe. It's a whole different way of posing people um, and learning your area, <clears throat> figuring out what the best angles are. Um, so I did the best that right. I could with them and gave them a couple of extra magic shots or holograms as we call them there, just so that he, uh, you know, he got all the experience there. But yeah, no, it, was, it, was, it was fun okay. and uh, I was happy to say hello. So yeah, folks, there you go. If you, again, if you go, 
See me, tell me that you know my secret identity. I'll know exactly uh, what you're talking about. That's the code. I'll, I'll remember it this time. <laughs> you don't even have to say driveway cheese. No. <clears throat> oh, secret oh, identity will do it. Yeah, secret identity will for sure do it. So that was fun. Um, all right, so what are we here to talk about today? Uh, probably the pinball show that just got uh, released, right? Yeah, that'd probably be a good start. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, so new pinball show just aired, and it was a little different to start than normal because mm. it was just Mel and Mel talking and Mel addressing yeah. a lot of the issues that were brought up by people with the release. Early access. Yes. Yeah. Um, more or less, Mel just basically saying, hey, uh, we hear you. It's early access. Um <laughs> Yeah. All feedback is good feedback. Uh, give us a chance. There's adjustments that are going to be happening and for so forth and so on. Um, I will say there's even been a new version that dropped uh, that added some graphical settings that uh, we were able to tweak. Uh, mm. Did you get a chance to mess with any of those, Jared? I, I actually just was able to turn ray tracing on, um, finally. And oh, okay. use it in some of the games, but I didn't really mess around with some of the more advanced settings because honestly, I had no idea what they did. And so... you know what? That's that's a common problem that I have. I wind up having to mm. Google what the heck what these those things settings are supposed are. to be doing. Um, yeah. So I I did wind up throwing up the uh, uh, little Nvidia. I don't know what you call it, overlay. So I can see frame oh, yeah. second, CPU usage, GPU usage. Um, and I one by one was messing with them. So the new ones that I noticed were we were able to uh, mess with aliasing, uh, choosing between mm. TAA and FXAA, which I have no idea what the difference between those two Yeah, those two, two, are. two things I had no idea. Um, except for I found that TAA you knocked the frames per second down a little bit. However, it did a much better job of aliasing even to the point that I didn't have to have it at high aliasing, I could put it at medium aliasing, and I still didn't notice all that many jaggies. Whereas oh, okay. FXAA, I turned that on, better frame rates, but even with high... Uh, what is it? What is it? High quality. Yeah. Mm. On, I still noticed jaggies. So okay. I was like, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice the four frames per second so that I could have no jaggies. Um and then there was a frame limiter, which basically said you could limit it to like 15 frames, 30 frames, 60 frames, yeah, 72, that 120, and unlimited. Here's the funny thing. I knocked it down to 30. It was still running at 44 frames per second. Uh, okay. That's odd. <laughs> right. So, so I was like, it, why is that not doing anything? I thought that it would lock it in at that rate. Yeah, yeah, right. Very but weird. No. So I don't know what that was up. Um, shadow quality. I didn't notice a difference turning it up, turning it down, and it didn't affect frames per second either. Um, right. Nor did post-processing to the best of my ability. Maybe it gave me a frame or two more if I mm. turned it off. Uh, and then something called chromatic, chromatic aberration. Aberration. Mm. Which is how clean of a line versus how it separates color. And Also... Like chromatic aberration is like that effect you get when you're looking at like a, a black and like one of those uh, 3D, um, you know, blue and red sort of yes. images and you get that blur either side of the. Yes. Right. Okay. Which to me, it's <clears> like, <throat> why in the world would I turn that on? I don't want chromatic aberration. But then no, somebody said it has to do with VR. I, again, I have no clue what. That is true. That is a VR. That is a VR thing. I remember seeing chromatic aberration okay. talked about in VR. So that could be an interesting point to make. Maybe they're <laughs> it's, putting it's in funny. settings. I'm not going to ask Zen to do this because no game designer seems to do this. But it would be so nice if you, when you hovered your mouse over it, it told you what it's supposed to do. <laughs> yes. It, that actually, honestly, it would be like, do, sure, you know, I think a lot of people who are tweaking the advanced settings, perhaps the, you know, the cost of entry to the advanced tab is to know what you're doing in there, potentially, yeah. which is what a lot of developers would assume if you're messing around with the advanced settings. Mm -hmm. But I, like, 
at the same time, don't make me think. Like, yeah. tell me, tell me basically, like, don't tell me what the thing means. Don't tell me what the acronym means. Tell me what it will do for me if I change it. Right, what effect like, on the game it's going to actually have. Yeah, will yeah. it make things sharper with the sacrifice on frames per second? Like, just do that. Like, sharpness with a sacrifice and performance. Like, okay, sure, right. uh, let's tweak that, you know. Which, again, comes back around to <clears throat> having a benchmark test within a game. Um, yeah, maybe, benchmark test. And, we and talked maybe about within that, right? that benchmark test, asking it, what do you, what do you prioritize? Yeah. Uh, if your system is not at max capabilities, what is it you're prioritizing? Do you want to prioritize frames per second? Do you want to prioritize graphical clarity? Um, mm. You know. Do you want to even break it down further and say, I want my ball to be liquid smooth, or I want everything to look flashy, flashy. You know, and and like I think not that's what I was words, saying obviously. by saying, <laughs> "Do you want high frames per second, which would make your ball look liquidy smooth, or do you yeah. want graphical fidelity, which would be flashy, flashy?" As you're saying, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like I, I want it to be broken down as a consumer. Like, what do I want to get? Like, you know, frames per second. Sure, you know, people probably understand that as consumers, yeah. but it's about the job to be done, right? It's like what will what do i want i want the ball movement to be really smooth or mm -hmm. i want the game to look really really incredible um so market it like that in the way you're speaking to it you yeah. know um that's so the I way to sort of make those advanced settings more accessible to people who perhaps don't quite know what these terms mean yeah yeah it's interesting too because i've i've been going through the forums and seeing you know people have been posting what they're uh, rig setups are yeah. and it's really interesting to me how there are, are people that are posting they have better specs on the rig than me and are having mm. terrible gameplay oh really whereas i'm having and and i don't know maybe it's my video card with its sex sex six <laughs> gigabytes <laughs> I got a sex six video, video card. card. Um, yeah. With it having a, a six gigabyte uh, RAM on memory. it, memory, uh, memory on it, that maybe that's the you know what what's putting me over the edge because I'm like I said before, I only have eight megabits or eight gigabytes of RAM on my system. Um, yeah, and I want to upgrade. I'm probably going to upgrade to thirty two gigs, uh, yeah. but I want to. That make, will make a difference. But that's my question: Will it? Because people are having that and having issues, like still. So I'm like. Okay, I, don't I think know. definitely RAM on board your GPU is the critical feature. The more RAM you have, the right? Because if I add RAM, I'm adding it be. to my motherboard, so I'm adding it to the CPU. Because but yeah. the game's not using hardly any RAM on the CPU. It's all GPU. It's all GPU. Yeah, well, that's where the expensive RAM is on your <laughs> GPU. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's yeah, the same it's not, RAM, but it's not like but it's on. But it's not like you can add more RAM to your GPU. Honestly, why don't they do that? Put slots on your GPU so you can put more <laughs> RAM on. You know, because then Nvidia and AMD are going to throw a hissy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, and there's probably more to it than just you know changing the RAM strips over. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I kind of feel like for <laughs> now, I'm going to stick with my eight megabits. Or guy, why do I keep almost saying megabits? My eight gigabytes. Mm. Um, Kind see of for as long as possible, just to show what a lower benchmark is, um, mm. you know, during early access. I think it's good. Well, I think keeping it keeping it low. I mean, because I'm able good. to run the like I said, I'm able to run the game. I'm usually at 44 frames per second as as my low for most of the tables. Um, mm. It's more than playable still at that, um, and I'm not going for high scores right now, so that's not an issue. No. And I think a lot of people would be satisfied if they didn't have to upgrade their game or their rig, knowing that they'd still be this. able to play it. You know what I mean? That's not just going to freeze yeah. up on them and look like a, a pixely mess. Yeah, exactly right. I think, you know, people, you know, it's fair to expect that, you know, if you're getting a brand new latest release game, that you are going to have to make some sacrifices if yeah. you don't have a, a super up to, up to the current spec PC. Yeah. But, you know, even people with, you know, NVIDIA like like 1660 ti's should be able to get reasonable reasonable output from it because all the like i learned something the other day about how nvidia 
sort of do their cards mm-hmm. and the essentially the upper end card like a, a 1600 or 16x series um card at the upper end of it is like a low end rtx so like a, a 2030 or something like that okay. in the way they actually sort of do it and maybe not so much with the um with the difference between rtx and gt but like if you're staying within the same sort of grouping so like a gt series card um the sort of the lower end of like the the thousands is like the upper end of the 900s if Mm -hmm. that makes sense Mm -hmm. so yeah if you if you on a bit of a budget and or you just can't actually lay your hands on decent video cards at the moment which i believe is still an issue yeah um you could go for like a like a you know super high-end um rtx 20 series card and get basically a low-end 30 series card Mm -hmm. um for your money so you know that's an option as well if you if you want to upgrade but you just you you can't get those 30 series cards yeah i think supply is improving though so that's good we'll see um other things that mel talked about uh, that he wanted to bring up he was mentioning the ticketing system and obviously you can guarantee he's heard an earful i mean we certainly gave him an earful yeah <laughs> we, sh- we did yep. um, but uh, you know yeah he was yeah the good news is the front... he's still re- he's still returning our emails so we couldn't have heard him that bad um <laughs> no i think i think what we said was far far less from what a lot of other people were saying yes about it um so but he wanted to he came straight out and basically reiterated that they're future proofing this game Mm. They're making it they so don't want to do this again they don't basically. want to do this again this they want no. to be their final platform and by having the currency in-house that allows them to control all the user info of what you own so mm-hmm. that if they can convince all the other Platforms. parties to let it happen this way it will be indeed a thing of you purchase it here you're going to own it on all the other systems mm-hmm. um so Here's hoping. I mean, obviously, what he's saying is, you know, they've got to talk to Sony, they've got to talk to Microsoft, they've got to talk to Nintendo, they've got to get them all on board. Um, yes, and that's no small feat. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, even if they got PC and one of the consoles across the line initially, not try and get them all across the line all in one hit, but then show the other consoles, hopefully, you know. That by doing it, there's advantages. Like you get more. That like there's some sort of win for them as yeah. a ecosystem because that's what it's going to come down to. Like, what is why should I bother giving everyone entitlements on my platform when they haven't paid for it on my platform? So yes, but on the other hand, uh, as somebody pointed out, the store that you purchase it from, that money is going to that store. So if you purchased it, mm. you know, via PlayStation. Sony's getting their cut of the store money that way. Uh, That's right. Which they'd be getting the same thing if they purchased, you know, the table outright from them. Um, but mm. Yeah, it's just a matter of it being entitled to the other platforms. Uh, I think the way these, the way things are going right now, the way especially Microsoft is the one that's uh, pushing this hard, where. They're kind of going towards being consoleless eventually, I think. Mm. Um, They're sort of going away from the Xbox as a platform and going, oh, let's just use PC. Just we'll just going no, just going streaming basically. Um, oh right, you know okay. I mean? Like because there's Nvidia have a service like that where you you can actually buy um, like a, a subscription. I think it's called Nvidia Now or something like that. Right. And you're using their compute and you're streaming it over the internet, yeah. the gaming. Now, obviously, unless there's a server in Brisbane, um, that doesn't work for Australia because it's coming from the States. I've yeah. done it before. Yeah. And unless you, if you've got a decent fiber connection, that's fine. But for things that require accuracy, like pinball, um, shoot 'em ups, all those sort of things, you've got to have very low ping for that to, for that to actually be a viable solution. So, but all the same, I think that this is something that uh, they're all kind of looking towards, um, especially yeah. because of the hardware issues during the pandemic. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's just raised a giant red flag, I'm sure, for them. 
Um, yeah, and D- depending on third parties for the success of your platform is yeah. is a problem. But at the same time, if they're using, if they're going to full compute and you know using cloud based servers to do all their um, their serving of games, that's another point of failure as well. Like we oh, see absolutely. data centers go down all the time. Absolutely. Right? But, so you know the, the entire you know North American seaboard goes down um, because some server catches some fire, you know. <laughs> so you, you, there, there's some big architectural problems if they're going to be challenges, I should yeah. say, not problems that they're going to need to solve there. So anyway, th- those were the things that uh, those were the primary things that were uh, Mel was covering. Um, mm. We are. I believe we're locked in for this unless something changes next episode Which we'll have we'll have mel probably on. will yeah so yeah uh we'll have we'll have we'll cover a lot of this stuff um just kind of touch base on things and and i know there's a myriad of things that uh, you all want to hear us directly ask um so i encourage you again if you have questions that you want us to uh, make sure that we remember to bring up with mel shoot i'm trying to remember the things that we've said oh yeah we'll make sure we bring that up um yeah <laughs> uh, remind us hit us up on the social hit us up on uh twitter there email uh, drop or us even a, send us an email if yeah, it's on the blah, 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 at gmail.com um yeah ask us these questions so that we can remember to write them down and uh, we'll try and work them into uh, our conversation with mel um, yeah because that is going to be coming up so the other big news that uh, Mel kind of dropped was they have somewhat of a roadmap. Yay, this is what we were asking for, right? Hey, public roadmap to yes. an extent. Now, obviously, he said that on there's a lot of things that they've fallen behind on. Mm. The area that they have not fallen behind on, however, is table development. Um, yes. And the release schedule. What they call the content team. Yes, content team. It's a content team. So that's yeah. that's a very good thing because obviously what their goal here is they want to have at least one table a month being released. Uh, new table being released. Yep. So with that in mind, let's bring up what the roadmap looks like here. Yeah. Da, 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 da. So obviously March they released Pinball FX and they released Indiana Jones. April, we've got a new table. We're going to cover this a little bit. Uh, World War Z. Uh, which was kind of like a, huh? Where'd that come from? <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. But we have info on where that came from. So we'll, we're going to dive into that a little bit. Uh, May, we have a new Williams Table release. June, we'll have a new Williams Table release. Start your speculation now, folks. Um, I think our, it's Williams Table. It's not new. I don't think they're new, new. Yes, but it's I new, think new. They're... No, it is new, um, new. It's new, new. It's new, new. Mm-hmm. And then July will be a new Zen original table release. Um, yeah, so I say it's new, new, Jared, because in May, they're also releasing uh, Whitewater and, and Roadshow, Roadshow, but then yeah. they said in the next Pinball show, they'll also tell us what the new Williams table that will the be new, dropping new. in May. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Yes. So potentially three tables, really, um, yes. available. So here's the fun part. Obviously, speculation immediately ramps up. And we've already mm-hmm. clued everybody in. Look on Zen's back wall for hints, right? Mm-hmm. Always. Always. The back wall is the reveal. Yes. So, <laughs> somebody has taken that an extent farther. And during Ask Akosh's section, they looked on what was on his back wall. And in the corner was a little edge of a box that was a Terminator endoskeleton. <laughs> So immediately oh, people were okay. like, it's T2. Now, I don't know if Akos's wall counts because Akos has shown stuff before that did no hide, no tail, or I mean, shoot, they've shown stern machines. Um, I don't, yeah, think, that's, that's I don't right. think his counts as the hint wall. I think it's only the pinball shows wall that I counts think as the hint the, wall. <laughs> um, I think the pinball, put it this way, I think the pinball shows studio is heavily curated. Yes. Um, but about what appears on that back wall. I don't think, uh, I think outside of the studio, it might be a little bit harder to, to right. control that. Right. Because that's just their personal offices uh, and, and, you know, that they're in, or, or the, even sometimes it's even their personal space because sometimes they're not even in the that's office. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That being said, on this latest episode, there was a Rubik's Cube. I think that'd be a horrible pinball machine, but. <laughs> yeah. Unless they make wizard blocks. Ooh. Then it. <laughs> 
if, if they do wizard blocks that actually do it properly, then that could be interesting. I keep on saying, if they did Pinball 2000, it would be right in the wheelhouse of oh, what Zen is. We've we've talked about this mm-hmm. before on the show, like a while back. Like, it, they wouldn't even need the hologram. No, they just make everything yeah. appear on the table, and yeah. there's your Pinball 2000. Like, yeah, that'd be great. I'd love it. Like having it redesigned like that would be rad. And the because fact it that would they look... can do video now, which is essentially what that is. But but like to your point, screw the video. Yeah, just put don't characters do on the... there. Yeah, just don't do the the, the horrible back box with the like the the mirror screen mm-hmm. and all that tech. Just do it like proper Zen originals like, and remodel the characters so they don't look janky in nineties. And then we like, can finally that... have the uh, the episode one table nobody's been asking for. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> with, with our favorite Jar Jar Binks in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only good thing about that table was you got to smack the living out of Jar Jar Binks right? with the ball. Right. And that was the best part of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, do it. Pinball yeah, 2000. Yeah. So, yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see what... Uh... Here's the question. In terms of new Williams, are we... I honestly don't think that we're going to be getting a new alphanumeric yet. I don't think until we see Funhouse and Space Station um, and Dr. Dude, until we see those become legacy tables, I don't think we're going to see any brand new System 11s pop up. Um, No. I think they're going to get those working first and then. They've got enough problems with just the regular Williams tables at the moment, um, performance-wise, before they introduce alphanumerics, which they had a hard time tuning on their PX system. So, yeah. uh, Yeah, they've got some work to do for Williams to actually become performant yet. So that'll be kind of one of those things where it's like, hmm, what are we going to see next? So if we had to guess, if that means it's a new Williams, that means probably it's a new licensed Williams. It probably has to be. I doubt that it would be an expensive license. Like, I don't think they're going to hit us with another $15 table this soon after Indiana Jones. Mm, I think it'll be a ticketed table, possibly. Yeah, probably. De- so depending on the license, well, here's the thing. We know that they're looking for a Cactus Canyon. But that being mm. said, they don't have it yet. So it's not going to be Cactus Canyon. Did they secure the Elvira license to go with Scared Stiff? Possibly? And Maybe. I don't think, I, I really mean, don't think Elvira's going to Cassandra's be- pretty... Cassandra's pretty good with licensing. Right, right. I don't think she's going to charge them an arm and a leg, so I don't think that would be the premium massive cost. Um, and yeah. then the last one is Jackbot. So if I had to guess, I'm going Jackbot. I'd say Jackbot's pretty good as a as a table choice. Um, it just makes the most sense for a new Williams that will be under the ticketing pricing and not be carrying a license. Uh, you have the team not rating, many... so you're not having to worry about the gambling anymore. Um, yeah. There's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of '90s games that aren't licensed. Well, we've covered um, that. All the, those are the three that aren't. Well, excuse me, I take it back. Who done it? That's the other one. Who so done it? That's, that's who done it? Jackpot and uh, uh, Cactus Canyon. That are the non-licensed yep. ones that are left of the DMD era. Everything else is yep. licensed. Um, and license. I don't think they're going to do Who Done It. Yeah. Not with Noir having just come out. Too close. No. Too similar. <laughs> It is probably too similar, and I uh, yeah, I don't think that would fit at the moment. It will no. it will fit down the road, but we just need a bit of of, of a break between the yeah the you know the so detective that's, themed that's, tables. That's what my guess is: is that this next Williams is not going to be a fifteen dollar one for May. The one for June, mm-hmm. I bet it will be. I think they're going to release one of these per quarter. I think we're going to get four heavy licenses per quarter, or, or I mean per year, so one per quarter. Mm. Yeah, I think it's probably fair to. Yeah, well, I was thinking originally every half year, but I, I think it's more imba- more ambitious than that. Yeah, I think. It's I think more they will be too. doing quarterly, based on what I've seen with their roadmap. I think yeah. now it's it's pretty 
fair to say that we can expect one every three months or so. So it's kind of nice that we have actually got a little bit of a uh, a roadmap of sorts to go with. Um, and I think to... honestly, as consumers, that's probably all we can expect uh, as far as yeah. features and other stuff go. No, nah. but table releases, if they can continue that up, that that sort of like expectation up, then that's that's good. Yeah. Keep that going. Uh, so let's go into World War Z here a little bit, um, mm. just so we can kind of get a look. First off, there's your back glass, folks. All right, Zen, just make that your back glass. That's a really, that's a killer that's image. Really awesome. I love that. Zombies that's... crawling up the uh, pinball machine. That's, I dig yep. that. Um, it's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, give you an idea of what the play field looks like. There we have it. Um, it's kind of, you know what? What was I asking for? I want self-contained machines that look like they fit in a cabinet. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's what I was right hoping, hoping for. We've got proper insert lights. And this thing, when it's when it's moving, I'm not going to play it because uh, I just... If you want to watch the video, go look it up yourself on YouTube. You can see it all you want. Um, it's not going to look great on our feed here. Uh, but proper insert lights looks like we actually have... We've got five modes... Um, I'm hoping for a proper mode hole. It seems like this lane right here says uh, light main mode. Uh, so I don't know. I'm wondering if this up here is our uh, mode start because Zen does kind of like that kind of situation. But lots of fun could ramps be. going around. What I'm thinking is the mode start could actually be you shoot that ramp and then it goes around and then falls into that subway. Because see, there's a diverter. Yes, that subway right here. And then it kicks the I back out. Over here, I think that could be the mode start. Yeah, in yeah. general, what I've seen of the ball in action here, this looks like an actual pinball table. Um, yeah, this looks that's, like that's something you preference. could make. Other yeah. than you got this guy here, which is a walking zombie. That's yes, zombies walk around here. When I was watching the trailer, I couldn't help but think, uh, <laughs> I was like, this is a combination of Walking Dead and Plants vs. Zombies. Two tables oh, right, that okay. they don't have the license to anymore. <laughs> and it was almost like, and let's roll it all into this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Oh, I think it looks uh, it looks fine. Yeah. It's been a while since we've had a good zombie a zombie flipper. So, right. you know, and, and they let's, do an, let's get this around. They do an interesting thing. Uh, hold on, I'm going to get my cursor back up to where I wanted it to be. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. uh, come over here. All right, so... You'll notice up here at the top of the table, there's a little chainsaw. That's a yeah, flipper. Yeah. It and is a flipper. These little guys yeah. pop up, uh, and you're knocking them down. It's just kind of cool little upper playfield mechanic. I yeah, it is that. cool. Uh, this table is from one of the new designers, Dolby. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It, it it looks like it has potential. I'm I'm kind of excited about this one. Uh, care less about the theme, more about I just like regular pinball. I like Zen Originals to feel like pinball. That's why yeah. Aliens is my favorite table that they've done. Because it yeah. feels like it could be an actual pinball machine. It just happens to have some fantasy elements on it. That's right. It's, um, it's firmly rooted in reality. Yeah. Now, something else I want to point out. So, if we go here onto their splash screen, notice some things. Down here, which my... <laughs> Lovely scroll bar, scrub bar is showing. Anyway, it's hiding Saber Interactive. Saber Interactive made video game of World War Z. Saber Interactive mm. is also who uh, is part of that merger with Embracer Group. Saber Interactive absorbed Zen, apparently, according to Wikipedia, but I didn't think that was the case. I don't know. Um, yeah. But anyway, so Saber Interactive and Paramount. Well, so those are two important. They important, are two important things. Uh, licensors. So if we think about it, Indiana Jones was technically Paramount. I don't know. Yep. I, I assume they, they had to go there. This is T Paramount. T2 it's, is? It's sort of based off of the movie, except for they don't have the Brad Pitt character in there. So that means you don't have to pay Brad yeah. Pitt. Uh, so it's a combination of the book and the movie. Uh, yeah. So you're, the licensing is more about the name than anything else. It um, seems to be, yeah. Yeah, uh, and the other thing is, so Paramount, um, they're Star Trek. Yep. Um, they're, well, they're yes and no. Well. 
Well, they, CBS is actually CBS Star Trek is now. actually who owns. If you're thinking of Next Generation, that's yeah. who CBS owns. Paramount is the feature films. So yeah, if you're talking right. about Stern's Star Trek table, that's then Paramount. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> confusing, isn't it? <laughs> it's so confusing. Licensing is hard. Um, um, so who else is Paramount? So Paramount is uh, T2? Adam's family. Yeah. T2 yeah, as well? No. T2. Oh, geez. T2 is in that licensing hell. T2 was initially Kralko. Uh Terminator has since been released oh, by been... Warner Brothers. Then yeah. it went over. Paramount released some Terminator movies. The licensing on Terminator. It's a hot potato, films, isn't it? Is bonkers. It bonkers. Yeah. Just. Stupid bonkers. I, I remember that now. I think, in fact, I think that was one of the challenges that Farsight had when they were trying to secure T two. Oh sure. And they had, and they had that really narrow window where they could actually sell it to because of the licensing or of the license or change. Well, um, between well no, the it was movie. it was some other company got the digital rights to make Terminator video games. Yeah, that's right. And so Farsight had to negotiate with them saying, hey, we're not trying to step into your realm. We just want to make this pinball machine that's already existed. Can we? And the deal was, yes, we'll let you. We won't charge you the licensing fee that we had to pay. Um, mm. The agreement is that when we release our game, you have to give a little promotion to it. Mm. I don't think a game ever got released. <laughs> no. I don't think so either. I think Farsight skipped, uh, kind of skirted that one. They they were riding the razor's edge right there. Um, As they often did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else would be... Uh, uh, I'm going to guess, I don't know if this is true, but I'm going to guess that Gilgan's Island might fall under the Paramount uh, mm, okay. realm. I'm trying to think who else of licensed tables might be within that because not Congo I don't think I, think, I don't think Congo no, I think... was was Congo Paramount? I don't think it was it might be so yeah. Congo might fall under that realm I don't know the good news is if Zen is talking to Paramount that's that's a that opens some good doors it, it in some summary doors. Paramount equals good yes <laughs> if, so there you go. if we could get if we could get them talking to Warner Brothers that would be a really good goo because that opens up a whole bunch of other licenses that are uh, Williams license, you know, like yep. Dirty Harry. Mm -hmm. um, and Dirty Harry and Flintstones. And uh, I was trying to think if there was another one that's of a Williams. No, Lord of the Rings is not included in that. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. So somebody pointed out, oh, wouldn't you know it, Zen's first original game is Saber. Because they're part of them. And Sabre did World War Z. So mm. that made me go, hmm. Let's go over to Sabre Interactive's Wikipedia page and see what other games Sabre has made. Hmm. Yeah. So let's There's look a down few. here. Right here at World War Z, right above it, we have uh, Evil Dead. Now. Yeah, right. That would be a really cool table. <laughs> Do I think Evil Dead is bloody as all get out though? I mean, that's what oh, makes yeah. Evil Dead. So I doubt we're going to see it Evil makes Dead. Doom look pedestrian, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but still, that's kind of fun to think about. Um, I like this down here, Warhammer Forty Thousand. Yeah, that's a, that's massive. That Imagine would be rather... if they tied a license in with right? that. Like, what would that bring into the ecosystem? Like, I, I such a huge know. fan base. Right? But that would yeah. be pretty cool uh, yeah. to see. Um, if you look, we got these Halo games. I don't know if they would get to do Halo. That's a whole... Is it Microsoft? Although it's now Bungie is with Sony. I mean, I don't know where that gets mixed in or whatever. But you can mm. see Saber is all about licensing. If we kind of scroll up here a little bit, my thing that I noticed, ooh, NBA. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Look that at that. If they have NBA connections, maybe we can get our NBA fast break. Wouldn't that Finally be the bomb? Finally, fast break. And all I'm going to say is, if there's a June Williams table that is at a premium cost, and what takes place, place in June? NBA Finals. Maybe. I don't know. 
Slam a lemma ding dong, <laughs> as, as the NBA saying. Jam says. I'm just saying. So, if you guys are you guys are always looking for clues as to things that are coming up, um, you know, sometimes it just takes doing a quick Google search <laughs> and going. So, what else did they put out there and and you know taking some wild speculation guesses? Because um, we did say, you know, that's the part of merging, playing with your partners yeah. and seeing who else has licensing and agreements in place that make your life easier. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Greasing the wheels of the licensing journey. Yeah, so we'll see where that all uh, where that all takes us. Uh, did the want to touch upon the one area that we haven't hit? So there are these three new tables that everybody's getting to play now, obviously, which is uh, Noir, Sky Pirates, and I always blank when I go to talk about the third one. Uh, the Curse of the Mummy. <laughs> yeah, the Mummy. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Jared, you and I have had a little chance to obviously bash around on these. Um, not extensively, either of us. No. Uh, but I've had We haven't put hours into it, but yeah. we had a bit more of a flip so than we did last So, have you time. formed some quick opinions about the three tables? What you like, what you don't like? Like, how yeah. would you rank them of those three? Okay, so let's start with the one that I ranked last. It's Noir. Okay. I, I cannot get into it at all. Like, okay. It's something about it. It just doesn't feel like it makes sense to me. Okay. Um, we'll go then, into detail in a moment. Just So give me yeah, your list. Here. All right. So Noir, and then I'd say Sky Pirates, then I'd say The Mummy. So So that's me, from least to most. Okay. And I'm going to go most favorite, Noir. <laughs> Right. Noir speaks to me. To me, it, it, I I'm enjoying it um, okay. at its most pinball-y best, uh, which is shocking to me because I don't usually like Zoltan tables. Um, yeah. Second place, I'm gonna go with Mummy, but not mm. by much. And then I go with yeah. Sky Pirates. Um, both of them, both of those tables are kind of not doing it for me. Mm, and okay. I think the so now we'll go into I'll go into my reasons why. Um, okay. Sky Pirates and Mummy suffer from my least favorite thing that Zen likes to do, which is, hey, who needs to have a mode start hole? Let's just have you hit ramps multiple times, and that'll start a mode. Oh, I Spellaramas! That. I it's hate Spellarama. That. It's, I it's hate not Spellarama. Even, I mean, it's only like hit it four times, but it does feel it, it's not. There's no flow to the ball. It's mm. always catch, stop, shoot, catch, stop, shoot. It's not combo, combo around, combo around, and then and and you know having a mode hole in an easy, not necessarily easy, but in a central location that you can readily hit. Mm. Um, I just found myself on both those tables going, I don't know what to do. I don't, you know, I don't have enough time to look up at the the DMD or the video board now, and quickly read what did I just do because the ball is rocketing right back to my flipper and I'm not registering yeah. what it is I'm doing and then all of a sudden something starts and I'm like wait what I don't know what that was you know um, you know it's it's an interesting point about the new video screen um, I, I mean I love it I love the fact that they've gone HD video with their DMDs mm -hmm. but oh geez it needs I really want it to be inside the playfield and incorporated into the playfield. Mm. Like have have it as a I know it's it, it would be impossible to do this obviously, but you know because there's a lot of stuff going on in that center part of the playfield. But geez, having it integrated into the bottom of the playfield, yeah, would would just make it so much easier to see what was going on when it was going on. I um, think, yeah, I think of the three video screens. And this might be why, part of why I like Noir. I think Noir's is the best of the three. Mm. It's the best integrated and easiest to get info from. I find both Mummy and Sky Pirates, I look up there and there's just like, I'm, I'm spending too much time trying to read what I'm supposed to be reading. It's, just, it's not immediately clear. And I find the Mummies in general to be the weakest of the video that's playing. It looks... It just looks too amateurish, I want to say. Huh. Um, okay. In in my opinion, that's just kind of like what my quick tell on that is. Uh, interestingly enough, I think it was Noir. There was a video mode that was full on DMD. Yeah, I I think they may not have got to it yet. 
Um, Which it was, that was just weird. I'm like, wait, why does this suddenly look like a DMD? Which makes sense because when we first saw Noir, it was a DMD yeah. through and through. There was no yep. video. I Yeah, I think they're still working that out, um, to be honest. Because there's no way they'd switch, they'd break the illusion and switch back to DMD again. Right. Right. Um, that just doesn't make sense. Uh, as for why Noir winds up being my favorite, I love the toys. Really phenomenal use of that center toy. Um, it's just it's, it's, it's a true mechanical feel to it. Um, everything that I've seen on that table could be on a real table. And again, it comes back mm. to that's my thought. I like tables that are that way. Whereas Curse of the Mummy is Zen at their uh fantasy best. Yeah. But I just I'm not making a connection to it. Um hmm. and I and I, I even predicted it. I'm not a fan of mini play fields. I've said it. I'm not a fan of the mini play fields and there's two of them on that one. <laughs> yeah, I the thing I don't there's a couple of things I don't like about Noir. Yeah. And Number one, it's it's trying to get that skill shot. It seems impossible Ooh, that skill to shot's do. random. It's that's the thing. Like, don't like a skill shot should be yes, it should be skill, not like the classic stern, the modern stern skill shots where you just you know put the ball into the oscillating lane. Like that's not a skill shot. You know but... what the skill shot is? You remember those kids' toys? It was a farm with the arrow that would point at an animal, and you just pull a string, and you never know where the arrow is going to land. That's yeah. the skill shot on noir. <laughs> Yeah, it, it totally is. I don't know how. I don't know how to dial that in. If anyone knows, if anyone's unlocked the code to trying to get that skill shot, is is it a timing thing? I managed to get it once, and I literally fluked it. I've I don't had know. it. It is lined it up. The ball goes, and it horseshoes around it and spits back out instead of going in. <laughs> yep, had that too. Like, so that's point number one. Yep. I don't want at the very start of the game. To feel like my first interaction with the game is an unobtainable goal. So it should feel like, yes, I have a chance of getting the skills or not. This is just pure random rubbish, yeah. which is what it feels like to me at the moment. Yes. The second thing that I I don't know why I hate it as so much, but when you're in multi-ball and that flipper recedes mm -hmm. and becomes unavailable, mm -hmm. uh, that drives me nuts. Really? Like having that flipper not there and not usable just it feels so wrong because it feels like there's a shot that you need to make there there and is you can't make but it. What, it, what the shot is is if you shoot the telephone that now uh becomes turns into a loop it, it turns into a loop that sends it up that ramp yeah i've never been able to get it well here's the funny so, thing i can hit that the one thing i hate about noir is that upper flipper? I cannot hit that that ramp shot to save my life. Yeah, it's a it hard is shot. Brutal, mm. and thank God that's not a mode start like most of Zoltan's tables normally. Would have <laughs> oh, you done. mentioned that was a mode start. Jeez. No, he's the one. That, that's why I don't like a lot of his tables because his mode starts are in impossible places that are mm. so difficult to hit. Because it's a combination of, oh, you got to hit a loop that comes around to a flipper that then you got to hit in action to make it hit the mode start. I hate that, but I've yet to get the ball to go down the Lombard Street. I've not been I've able done to that. shoot that shot. I can't get it for the life of me. And I don't know if oh, this is right. where, because I'm not playing at 60 frames per second, that I'm not able to get it. Um, I don't know if it's because there's some latency because I'm using Windows or uh, dual shot for Windows, uh, you know, third party controller uh, support well, uh, to make it happen. I, and I'm trying like crazy. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hear the ball rolling around, but before I even see it, I'm gonna start my flip or what? I can't hit it. I cannot hit it. And that's the only part of that table that's driving me nuts. Um, mm. Yeah. So we we both got our. We've got both got our limp, like reservations about that table. Yes, they're different, but there's there's still something with it. Even though it's your favorite, it's your it seems to be your in. favorite with some caveats. Oh yeah, so oh, believe me, I'm not like none of these tables. I'm, I'm like going woohoo, these are must plays. No, no, I'm kind of just kind of like 
it feels like a step back to the way originals were. And I'm shocked mm. about that with Curse of the Mummy because that's by Deep. I usually love his stuff. But this is, as we know, Deep had this one in his back pocket for years. Yeah. And Anna is the one that has finished it. Yeah. And I feel that that's why it feels like an older Zen table because it's because it's got it's got deep older design older design. ideas behind it yep. yeah i i have played the mummy a couple of times um and for some reason it like i don't have a problem with upper play fields i think they're fun mm -hmm. um uh so i i like the fact it's got the the upper play fields there it's got some different mechanics up like there's different mechanisms at the top as well um, which are fun to interact with. Like on the left-hand mini playfield, you've got that sort of spinning bar that you have to spin around and complete the lights. That's an interesting thing I haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, <laughs> it's that that's, that left-hand playfield is super wide flipper get, though. But the thing I like is, like, one of the modes that I stumbled across when I was playing it over the last couple of days was you build a bridge between the two. So Yeah, you, you I noticed shoot, that. You shoot a, you, you sort of glance a target and it flies off and you feel like you sort of lost the ball like cheaply off the playfield, but it actually adds a bridge piece mm -hmm. between the playfields. I haven't completed the bridge yet, but I really want to. Yep. I want to see what that does. So there's there's things in it that like draw me into the game. It feels more accessible than noir um, in that, you know, you can shoot the ramp. They're easy enough to shoot. Um, it's all, it's still shoot the ramp and light the thing three times or so. Um, but there seems to be, for me, a little bit more clarity in the fact you need to shoot them. I, I do think the thing I think is missing on that table from a feedback to the user perspective is they need to take some big cues from Stern here in their future table designs. It's okay to have faceted inserts against each ramp, but you need a big, a big flashing light like right. a really clear arrow shaped flashing light like that you cannot miss shoot here for this mode and yes. it needs to be really visual and really like attention grabbing that's what they need to do for future table releases because that's going to help newcomers to the table understand what they need to shoot for much better than just like an insert light blinking because they're always blinking like yeah. i, I and want that, something that's, that's my, really that's clear my problem with that table too was it was just like Everything's blinking. And at one point I was doing it, it was saying something about there's a drought and we need water. Yeah, you gotta shoot. I couldn't figure the... out for the life of me what to hit because there was a bazillion blinking lights. I'm like, I don't know what the water... And, and I even paused the game, went into table, you know, view mode, and I'm looking at the lights. I'm like, nothing is indicating to me water <laughs> or drought. It's Oasis. The mode or is Oasis. Oasis. Right. So you gotta like, you gotta but look for the Oasis, Oasis shots. I, I'm not, I, again, I, it just wasn't... What I found myself having to do with both Sky Pirates and Mummy is I have to look at the table guide. Mm. And what I, I found, haven't yet. And what I found but myself I probably with, need to. We, and this is the difference between Zen Originals and Williams Tables. Is I then I went and I threw in Party Zone, and I couldn't remember what I what I need to do in Party Zone. It's been a while since I'd played it. Mm. But it became so apparently obvious within thirty seconds what I need to do to get things mm. you know, going. That's the difference between really good table design and maybe call it deep table design because unfortunately a lot of new sterns are this way where damn if you don't need to know the roadmap of how to get places and the only way you're going to know that is by looking on the internet and seeing what their little branch tree branch system is to get you know everywhere. Oh, it drives me insane. Like pinball is, oh geez. The thing is, pinball is because it's going into homes now. Yeah, that people are demanding more and more deeper rule sets right. so that they get more longevity out of the game. Right. Whereas, you know, back in the nineties, we had Belly's Game Show, where you just had to get, you know, four different, you know, prizes, and then you get Showcase Bonanza. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I long for that simplicity now in tables because I just don't have, I don't have the inclination as a player mm -hmm. to go and deep dive into a rule sets to to know. In the case of Batman 66, for example, it's a great example where you do 
one one character then another character then do this mode then do that and you get like this amazing amount of points it's like oh i don't have the time for this right like, just let me flip the ball and, and Wait, just how are you supposed it. to walk up to the table and know that the, it doesn't say it on the apron nope. if it doesn't say it on the apron it doesn't nope. exist yeah to me um yeah and that's i know that's completely not the way you need to think about pinball now but that's the way i think about it because i'm old and uh, I, I just don't like the complexity anymore. I don't like it. Shakes angry fist at the sky. <laughs> Another thing I cloud. don't care for with, uh, with Mummy is <laughs> that pyramid as a ramp. It reminds you too much of the... Uh, the Masters of the Force. Force Masters of the Force, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. I hate Masters it... of the Force. <laughs> yep. And there it is. Stupid yep. pyramid ramp. Wow. Um, it's the Sith. I mean, for, for as much as... For as much as you might, as somebody might hate the jump ramp in No Good Gophers, I would much rather have a jump ramp than that stupid pyramid. It just, I don't know, there's something about it. I, that whole table, again, to me, that table is the epitome of could never be made as an actual pinball table. No. Everything from, you've got water, you've got these crazy gaps, you've got uh, you know, alligators as pop bumpers. Um yeah. The, everything about it is fantasy, 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 fantasy. Very little real pinball. Um, yeah. Sky Pirates at least has uh, more of that pinball thing. But Sky Pirates, I'm just having a problem connecting with. Um, yeah, me too. I just, can't. I don't know. The, 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 the thing's not grabbing it. me. Yeah, it's the same for me too. Like I, I'm very like much. I go Sky Pirates. I need to. I need to play this game so I can sort of talk about it more. But I. That's the only reason why I want to play it. Yeah. I, and that's really like, I don't want to be feeling like that about the game. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's more to it than what I'm seeing, but it's just like anything. If like, if it was in the arcade uh, and I had this up against, you know, something like, like alien or something like, um, oh geez, what's another really tight one? Like um, for example, Son of Zeus. Yeah. And then these, these tables were like, you know, in a row together. I'd look at Sky Pirates and go, yeah, it looks pretty. But then after a couple of games, I, I don't think I've played again. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't seem to be it, enough it, in it for it me. It reminds me of, well, both when when Pinball Arcade was in its heyday. Mm. That's where 90% of my gameplay was. And then the other 10% yeah. went to Zen. And mm -hmm. of Zen, there was only a few tables that I would go back to over and over again. Um, yeah. Uh, and it was mainly Wolverine, Iron Man, and uh, Super League. Those were, because yeah. this is FX2 days. Uh, those mm -hmm. were the ones that I constantly would go back to. And then I'd sample other tables and just kind of go, eh, eh, I'd be done with them. Yeah, that was a nice distraction, but yeah, give me yeah. the other three. And these three, if we were back in that era, would be the, eh, they're a distraction. Yeah. That being I mean, said, they're pretty. Still better than anything that Zacharias put out. Um, <laughs> correct like as far as original tables go yes that that's very true yes. like they you can see the thing is that uh, i don't want what i don't want is the designers to think that you know they they put out average tables because they're not average no they're the the table designs the good table designs the theme integration is really good that's I think we could both agree on how they've integrated themes for those tables. They're all excellently integrated. Yes. Um, it's just that the it feels like the game. I'm try. I was trying to work out what it was that was making me feel like sort of very neutral about the tables, and it's just. I think it's actually the game, the actual game mechanics of the games that it's just they're they're all the same. Like well, again, like you said, you hate Spellorama. I do. And two of those tables are Spellorama. That's right. Pirates like, and, and, and uh, Mummy. Both of those are yeah. Spellorama. Noir yeah. is less Spellorama and actually has somewhat of a mode start. It's right there in the middle. It, it's a hmm. like, investigate kind of thing. And yeah. It's not really starting the mode, but it's semi there. Um, it's also got some interesting playfield features like the Lombard Street, like thing it's fun like when you eventually get there chris yeah it, it's a fun mechanic well that's what i'm saying it's got with. toys that i like it's got a layout that i like if it, if that upper flipper would just be 
a little more friendly. I'd have greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah. And have you tried messing with your views? Because I've what view do you play? I usually I do play view two. View two. Yeah, I do view two as well. You might want to mess with your views on that table a little bit to get better perspective on the shot, yeah, maybe so you I'll can try at least see, it. And see. Yeah, see, just mess around with the views because that might help you try and dial it in, and then you can go back to view two once you've just dialed in where you need to flip it from. Although once we get cabinet mode, I'm going directly overhead, and that's going to be even more difficult. Maybe, although I shouldn't. Mm. I, it's not necessarily because then I can see exactly where on the flipper it has to go to hit that angle Correct. to get up there. Um, this one could actually benefit greatly from from cabinet mode. Yeah, and I think to an extent, these tables, particularly, uh, I think Sky Pirates probably here would actually translate really well over to VR. Yes, um, I feel that some of the maybe some of the things with Sky Pirates is everything. It's got that problem where sometimes you get tables that everything blends in. Mm -hmm. Um. And maybe that's the problem I'm having with Skypart. It looks too, I don't know. It sort of feels the same level, but it's clearly not the same level, like as far as like the play field goes, but it everything sort of feels like one dimensional. Yeah. I don't know. It's really hard for me to try and work out what the critique is yeah. here because I'm having a really hard time working out what it is rather than saying, I don't like it. I want to try and work out why, and it's really hard to, dial that in for me again it's, it's the same reason why i look at world war z and go i think i'm gonna like that because i know what i like yeah you know it's like again i want to be like a pinball table play like a real pinball table and i want to have modes like a real pinball table mm. that's what i want and that one clearly looks like it has it nor is the closest of these three that has it it's why i uh shoot any of the tables that i've liked it's again why do i like alien so much because the mode start is right there in the middle of the table and can be hit with either flipper and it's yeah. really easy to start the modes that's why the other thing and yet it's know, still a challenging table and here's the other like the counterpoint to this like think of those star wars tables that have a, a very like that are sort of a crossover between a little bit like the mummy and the fact that they're pinball but there's a lot else going on. I like think mm. of um, the Force Awakens, mm -hmm. how that table is like a sand dune essentially. Yeah, but it's still rooted in pinball, and it's still like the environmental effects are there. Like if you're playing it on widescreen, it's just like the table becomes part of the environment, and it looks. That, I think for that Force Awakens really good. is probably one of my favorite of the Star Wars tables. And I, I, I would agree. That's one that I constantly go back to because they got the balance right with that one. Yeah. It's. It's real pinball. It's logical. Even the you know the effects like the you know the tentacled monsters that sure. come out of the holes, it's still essentially a bass toy. Yep. You know, and that's the sort of thing and that brings me into the tables, right? And it's got good flow. It does have good, great flow, yeah. like really good flow. And that's what I'm looking for in a table. I want to like when I play a table, I want to feel like I'm winning, and the way I feel like I'm winning is making consecutive shots because mm -hmm. it feels like I'm in the zone with the table and I want that feeling of flow. Yeah. And I think, you know, Sky Pirates certainly has a lot of, you know, ramps and shots. Like there's a lot of loop shots and stuff in Sky Pirates. I just but don't I'm feel just... like I'm accomplishing anything. No, that's, I, that's the problem. the problem. That's, I think that's the thing with these tables. I feel like, I, I'm just shooting shots and there's nothing like it's because it's Spellorama and yeah. it takes it saps all the fun out of the gameplay. Like I'm just shooting this loop. Like the the classic one is that upper loop, that upper left flipper loop. You just shoot it, it mm -hmm. traps it, shoot it, it traps it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, I'm just bored by it yeah. at the end and I don't want to do it anymore. So, and then some of the other ones like the compass ramp, you got to shoot that like seven times. What? Is it seven is it, times? Is it more? It's is more. It, it feels it's nearly ten. Oh, okay. To spell the word, it's like it reminds me of th that horrible home pin Thunderbirds. Yes. Where you have to where you have to shoot the Thunderbirds ramp. So no, Thunderbirds are go. Right. Is what you have to spell right. on that game. It's like please no. Like it's just it's and the thing is, back in the day, Stern, Stern in the two thousands era. They were all Spellorama too, and the reason why they're all Spellorama, it doesn't take a lot of programming. Right. That is the thing that I think I'm 
probably focusing on here is that it feels like Spellaramas are a cop out and they're hiding a lack of of rule programming or I guess playfield design and playfield programming integration. Yeah. It feels like a cop out and I just don't want that in the game. Like I, I want it to feel a lot more integrated. I do wish um the voice work on all these three tables is much better. Yeah, I actually like it's, the it's voice pretty work. Pretty good. Uh, Noir's great. There's just some repetitiveness. Uh, every single mm. time I launch the ball on Noir, he does his little skill shot speech. Let's have. Mm. Can we have variations of the speech? <laughs> so that or I, just make it more quippy, like yes. you know, less less verbose and like the first like, one. Again, the first time you launch, that's fine. Yeah. Every other time after that, it needs to be quick. Yeah. Make it a, a yeah a shortened version of um, the call out. And then I keep on saying this, and we've we've critiqued this ad nauseum with Zen. But if you're going to put information up on the DMD, give us time to read it, trap yeah. the ball, capture the ball, do something so that there is a. Or if you're not going to do that, have the callouts spell it out clearly, and yep. combine callouts that with, with a what, big flashing light. I was going to say combine that, that with what it. you're saying with big flashy light. Do a, your light sequence should like quickly dim. Bing, 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 bing. And then the lights can come back on so that yes. you immediately know what you need to do. It's not like that has to be the only thing blinking. No. Just, you got to do a better job with your light sequencing so that the lights act as an arrow <laughs> to, to tell us what we need to do. You you need beacons in the game. Yes. Like, the that's really what it comes down to. I, I want clearly identified shots. Like, I want that entire ramps light cluster to be yeah. lit and flashing yes. really really apparently like that's what i want again all you player. have to do is just look at medieval madness it's got a bazillion lights on there a lot of them are flashing all the time but you understand completely hey i've hit that ramp three times it's blinking for the fourth time i need to yep. hit that one more time i need to do that with over here when i did that all of a sudden this blue light you know lit up over here you know, and these are, I don't know, or, or look at Attack from Mars. It, it, the lights tell you the story. It's really clear and easy to understand. Yep. Even though there's lots of blinking things going on, you understand if it's a solid, that means you've already lit it a bunch. All the insert lights are playing key into that. Um, yeah. They're getting better. Like I, Zen's getting that, better with it. Because, lordy, just all you have to do is look at Earth Defense Oh, what what even happens on that table? I don't know. I don't know. I've done my best to try, and I've never gotten too too far into it. I just I have no clue what's going on. Yeah, um, me neither. That's just a a vomit of lights doing whatever they want to do, <laughs> telling no story whatsoever. No, no, no. So, anyway, I think. Um, that that's our con constructive criticism. We keep on saying Zen, you know, feel free, go back and redo some code. Zen does it all the time, or uh, Stern does it all the time. Update the code, um, get your player feedback, update it, correct it, g tweak it. Do vault make editions it. of these old tables, yeah, like like it, Stern does. Just just do a little bit. It's not going to take much. There just needs to be a little bit of tweaking. Um, go back. Redo some of your callouts. Uh, we've said it last time with Rome. Just redo all the callouts. Recast mm. that callout system, um, and fix your insert lights on that one. Um, exactly. And, and that would be a good one that maybe we'll remember that to talk to Mel about. Just see what his opinion of. How about? Do you guys ever involve? once you get it in the hands of people, take people's feedback and feel like okay, now we need to update the code on this. A bit like Mars. You know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Mars yeah. completely got made better. So did um, uh, Epic Quest. Yeah. There's a such a difference between Epic Quest in FX2 versus FX3 in terms of uh, the rule changes, and they were for the better. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that that would be really welcome. I'm mean, I, mean, I know that 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 all costs money, and it's got to be it's got to come from somewhere. Like you know. But like, you geez, can't tell if... me that the designers are like, no, I'm completely happy. I'm sure they want to go back over and sure. revisit their work. Again, like... they've learned so much since those tables have come out. You know there's things they want to tweak. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah, anyway. for sure. Um, well, that's enough of us. <laughs> I know. We are we, casting we, a whole lot of shade over these brand new tables. It's, well, I sort of feel thing, bad like about I said, it. The but... funny thing is, is though, if I said, if you were going to pick one to purchase, which would you pick? I'd pick Noir. And that was the one that you wouldn't say least to pick. No, I'd probably go with the mummy, actually. Right. Yeah. So, so there you go. Different strokes for different folks. Right. right? Um, different yeah. consensus. And I do feel like Noir is a table I'm going to continue to play. Um, yeah. Even though, like I said, even though it's not like, yeah, that's awesome. It does feel like a table that I am going to continue to revisit. Um, I know I haven't scratched the surface so. on any of these tables either. Like, oh God, no. No, nah, there's so much more to explore on them. I just I need to just get the motivation to go and do it. Yep. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. All right, folks, that'll do it for us uh, this week. Like we said, uh, two weeks from now, we should have Mel on. Uh, we'll have a good mm. discussion with him. And Send uh, us your questions. Yes, send those questions. We want to know what... Uh, doesn't mean we're going to ask all your questions, <laughs> but it's at least guide us uh, towards certain mm. questions that we want to, certain things we want to touch base with him about. Um, I know he's going to want to talk about World War Z and uh, yeah. potentially we'll, we'll mine them for some uh, stuff about what's going on with Williams. Like, for instance, why do we not have true Williams playfield action going on? Why are we still dealing with basically the we got semi Williams physics, but the flippers aren't. They're still steep. Like, mm. What are we going to call that? You know, it's it's not the same as what it was in in FX three. And is it that way for a reason? Is that permanent, mm. or is the other stuff coming? Um, we're gonna we want just, those roadmap things. That's basically what I think we want to most talk to him about is where I just, they're going. I really hope that they do another cut before we speak to him because uh, like I tried to play uh, the getaway. Yeah. with ray tracing on it, unplayable mm. the ball rate i reckon it's below 30 frames a second mm -hmm. um safe cracker is still a horrible mess mm -hmm. it's got still got collision detection issues on that table they haven't touched it mm -hmm. so i i think it's time to start looking at these williams tables um maybe you know so yeah again hopefully we, we hopefully more know, to build. that's our biggest thing is we're fine if this stuff is placeholders, if they're testing it and looking at data for certain things so that then mm. they can apply that to fixes coming down. We just want to know that, is this what it is or are we expecting more to happen? Um, yeah. Because if there's more to happen, then I'm like, cool. Cool. I'll shut up about it. Yep. Yeah. Do your thing. Yep. That's the last I'll say until I see the, the new stuff coming in. Yeah. And honestly, like, and obviously... They're not going to leave the Williams tables in the state they are. No, there's there's a lot of ROM emulation, like orchestration, music timing issues that are floating around. There's performance issues, like just frame rate performance issues. Obviously, they're going to be addressed in the early access. That's that's a given. But it feels like they're like at the moment in what's on offer. They're almost like the flagship. Yes. Of the of the actual early access, yet they're not being treated as such. So clearly Zen have got data suggesting that other tables are the priority for them. I just feel that it's really time to get those billions tables working really well. Yeah. Um, and that's all I'd like to say about that. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll save that stuff then for uh, Mel and kind of hit for a little on, chat on those things. Yes. Uh, mm. Again, we appreciate you guys uh, tuning into us. If you haven't noticed, um, yes, I did the crafts thing. I put tips on to our Twitter. Uh, we've had people var various times ask us, hey, how can we uh, support the show? Um, and it's always been, well, you can find us on PayPal. Uh, hey, you mm. can hit us up this way. That's an easy way to just go to our Twitter. And uh, if you want to uh, support the show, feel free to give us a tip. Uh, yeah. We're not holding you to it uh, by any means, but we figured, ah, what the hell? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, geez, a, a few bucks here and there will, you know, help pay the website hosting fees. There you go. Luckily, we're a pretty lean show. We don't have a lot of overheads, but... Yeah, look around. Know. We don't have a lot of overheads. <laughs> no, we don't at all. No. So, you know, we do it on the cheap, but, you know, we try and keep we try and keep it uh, low cost, but high entertainment value. All right. So until then, though, uh, again, thank you. We'll see you next time. And next time, it uh, won't be stuff and things, Jared, because it's going to be Mel, so... It's going to be melon things. Melon yeah. things. There you go. Yeah. All right. Until then, <laughs> folks, bye-bye. See you later.